What's up, guys? I'm at the Tokyo Marriott, and I'm here for one night. Did not plan on doing a hotel review or tour or walkthrough, whatever you want to call these videos. I didn't plan on doing one at all. Uh, I stay at a staging hotel one night before I fly back home. I'd like to stay at a hotel that is close to the airport. Uh, that way, it's an easy venture there in the morning. Check out this. All right, so check out this room they gave me. Uh, you walk right in, and you're really not sure what's going on. This is how I walked in and saw the room. And what you have right here is a small guest bathroom. So you know you have a great room when there's a guest bathroom right when you walk in, right? Because if there's a guest bathroom, the main bathroom has got to be awesome. So here we have a guest bathroom. Uh, one of those cool Japanese toilets, right? With all the functionality on there. You can see those in my last couple of videos. So nothing really new there, although it's awesome. Here's the foyer closet. And, and then I noticed a yoga mat. So I'm like, okay, this is a pretty hip area. Right up, there's a yoga mat there waiting for you. But what is beyond this door? What is happening here? And you get in and... It's a Marriott, right? Look at how that door is bedazzled right there. And purples and kind of a sun type mirror. Look at bedazzling going on. And you have different uh, textures on the wall, some fabric, and then it's mixed with some wallpaper. So I'm like, yeah, this is pretty cool. I have to show it to you guys. So this is a Tokyo Marriott. This is floor number 24, there are 25. It's in a huge tower. I think it's called the Takanawa Tower. There are only four hotel rooms on this floor. Only four. That's it. There's the end of the hallway right there. There's the end of the hallway right there. Well, what's up? 2401, that's where we are. So three rooms this way, one room that way, only four on this level, which is interesting. So let's get back inside this hotel room. And then we go into the living room and I haven't even sat down at any of this stuff yet, but what a cool little breakfast conference area right here. Love the plush velvet chairs. Comfortable, really comfortable. So this is great, not only for chilling, let's see if it's comfortable before I say it's great. Yeah, it's not bad, it's not bad. Um, you could probably sleep a couple people on here as well. So sleep a person that way, sleep a person that way. And then look at this chair with an ottoman yeah this is this is happening this is really cool and then i like the polished white table look at the geometric design on this look at that cylindrical helical shape that is really cool and then look at the view of uh, of tokyo this used to be a walkway i can't get out there don't think you can get out there but that is a cool terrace overlooking tokyo Let's move it on to the bedroom, but before we do that, here we have a luggage storage area. You put your luggage on top of here, you store your things. There we have some Japanese linens, safe. And that's really about it. I like the soft clothes on those doors. Soft clothes, very cool. Bedazzled door, what's behind bedazzled door? Look at this bedroom. How cool is this bedroom? This is a Marriott, thematic purples continue into this room a bed foot bench which is always a sign of class to me more white fixturings over here i just really like the way they decorated this hotel room rings rings here we have a continuation of the view of tokyo this room would be over the top if you could have access to this balcony right here that would be so cool bedroom let's check out this king size bed you can see that the headboard goes all the way to the ceiling awesome and then you move on to the bathroom and this bathroom has some different corridors to it so here's the first one here's your sink again with the purples right purple glasses and then we walk back and we walk back and we walk into the rest of the bathroom all marble literally all marble great acoustics in here another fine Japanese toilet look at this polished Rollable. I didn't know that. I did not know that was rollable. This polished rollable towel rack. Genius, right? Rollable towel rack. That might be a first on the channel. That is really cool. Um, nice soaking tub. And then your shower has a rain head, a large rain head. That thing is like the size of a pizza. And then you have a handle as well. Two robes chilling. And that's really about it. So the hotel walkthrough continues. I just finished the gym. The gym was okay. I got the job done. Nothing to write home about. 
Lots of free weights. So for you free weight fans, uh, this is the gym for you. You don't see free weights at a lot of gyms anymore because of liability issues. This one had a lot of them. In fact, it had more benches than it did treadmills. So for you cardio people, not the gym for you, but for you free weight people, you could squat, you could bench, you could deadlift all at this gym. All right, so we are off to eat. We are off at Lounge and Dining G. What a name to eat at, Lounge and Dining G. Here, let me show you what the lobby looks like. It's quiet. There's the check-in right there. And then we approach the entrance and it does have a tower type of feel to it. You can see the huge ceilings, 30, maybe 40 feet. But you can see it has a tower feel to it. And for being in a tower, this hotel is very quiet. It is the most quiet of the four hotels that I have stayed at. I really like the feel. This has like a big stadium type feel to it, but it's really small. Um, it's quite comfy, quite cozy. So I'm gonna go out to the bar. Not a lot of Japanese people sit at the bar, I have noticed. So I'm gonna take a seat right there. All right, so going through this bar and lounge menu, uh, they got a nice selection. It's very comprehensive. You have some wines, some champagnes. They have their own wine. Uh, you have some whites and some reds. That's pretty standard, but then take a look at these cocktails. Samurai Red. I might have to order that just based off of the drink glassware alone. That looks pretty cool. Tokyo Kamachi. I like the fact that they have some winter selection cocktails. I like when they have rotating cocktails on a menu. Then you have some Roku, uh, which is a craft gin. A couple of Roku drinks right there. And then the spirits, and I may have to, I was gonna do this, I was gonna do the Essence of Suntory. This is really great marketing right here, really pulls you in, right? With the cask barrels and the colors and everything like that. But I think I'm gonna skip this and then go on to this. I might have to do the battle of the Japanese whiskeys, 21 year versus 21 year, the Takatsura versus the Habiki. Which one is it gonna be? I think that's happening. All right, so just chilling here at the bar at the Lounge and Dining G. And this menu is quite comprehensive, strikingly. Um, I ordered the eight kinds of yakitori. That should be interesting. Also went with the lobster avocado cold salad. You can see they have a couple different types of burgers. They have some vegan options. Then you move over to the main dishes. So lots of main dishes here. So it goes down the entire page, all the way down to a tomahawk steak. They have some wagyu here, chicken, salmon. Then they have a chef's recommend page. Then they have add-on sides. So a really, really nice menu here. I like that decorative artwork there in the background. And this master's dream here, it's a beautiful, beautiful lager, uh, both in color and in taste. All right, so here is the Samurai Red. Look at that. Pretty close to resemblance of what I see in the photo. In fact, it's almost, uh, it's almost a mirror. It's almost a mirror identical. So what do we have here? We have Roku, which is gin, uh, lime juice, campari, strawberry syrup, soy milk, and there is the tree spout, although I bet it is not drinkable. These vaulted ceilings are so cool. They gotta be like 40 feet high. And I love the cylindrical tubes going across the top. Very stadium-esque, but then when you look down here, uh, you have the great decor. Very, very classy. This place is pure class. Uh, okay, so what do we do? We did the lobster and avocado salad. I thought it came out in a stack. It came out on a bed of greenery and redery cabbage. That's all right. Uh, let's go in. So here we have the eight different types of satori. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, I like how it comes on this slate right here. And then they also gave me these sauces. All the way from salt, smoked salt, all the way up to some uh, something I can't pronounce. So halfway through, uh, you can put it upright. You can put it any way you want. I like the fact they put it on tilt. Pretty cool. Uh, not my favorite though, a little bitter for me. Here's what I ordered for dinner. Barbecue spare ribs, three pieces. And then I also ordered the... Roasted venison loin from Aizu Prefecture. That is a city on the peninsula of Aizu. Right, there is the venison tenderloin. I love when the venison looks like steak. It means it's usually gonna be really, really good. And then we have three pieces of the barbecue spare ribs. Let's do it. All right, so here we have the 21-year-old Hibiki. Here, was, here we have the 20-year-old Takatsura. This one is $65 an ounce. This one is around $50 to $55 an ounce. Let's do it. All right, so here we have the 20-year-old Takatsuri. And then here we have the 21-year-old Hibiki. Both look pretty similar in color, uh, with the Takatsura being a little bit more golden, at least to my eye. But let's let the palette decide which one is better. All right, boom. 
and boom, let's do this. I like how in Japan, by the way, they present the bottles for you while you drink. I think that's a really cool trade. Good morning, good morning. I like these opposing drapes. Look at this. Boom. All you gotta do is just pull one. I like that. All right, good morning. Uh, my last final hours in Tokyo. This is uh, becoming surreal now. It was a great trip. The 10 days went by extraordinarily quickly, as they normally do when you jump from hotel to hotel. So I did four hotels, and I ended up doing videos on all four. I only expected to do videos on half of them, but uh, what can I say? I was inspired, uh, I'm passionate, and plus the hotels are really cool. This Marriott is amazing. One of the best Marriott's I've ever been to. Really two stand out. The one in Little Rock was awesome, and then this one is awesome as well. Uh, if you haven't checked out that one in Little Rock, check it out, or at least check out my video. Uh, so I only have a few hours remaining in Tokyo. What am I going to do? Well, I'm going to enjoy this hotel, and apparently this little sticker, this Marriott Ambassador sticker, gets me a free breakfast buffet down at the lobby. And you might say, well, free breakfast buffet, big deal. This thing looked really legitimate. In fact, I saw it last night. I think it's a permanent fixture. Like this breakfast buffet is a big deal. They've, they were talking about it uh, when I checked in. I heard some other people talking about it. I don't want to get too hyperbolic about it, but it sounds like it's the real deal. So they gave me a sticker for it. So it's gotta be awesome. All right, let me walk you through this buffet. This buffet is unreal. So here, this is just a start. This is the salad bar. So you have some avocados and vegetables, things like that. Oh, we're just getting started, just wait move over to the other side some cereals uh, non-fat milk soy milk regular milk but let's get on to the other side here look at the freshness of that orange juice you can see the pulp pineapple juice grapefruit juice pre-blended smoothies to show you what's in there tomato apple grape orange fuji water some dumplings some fried egg rolls let's see what's in here not really sure what that is we got some fried rice. Then we'll move on to the pastries and the breads. Croissants. Muffins. God, look at those. Some cheeses that you can slice yourself. Pre-cut for you, actually. Some pre-cut cheeses. So charcuterie. We have some salmon. Smoked salmon, salami, pastrami, turkey, raw ham. Boom. And then we'll move over to... Japanese corner. I'm gonna have to try some of this. We have a Japanese omelet, fish cake, grilled salmon, some radishes, sausages, maple syrup in a little shot glass. We have some beans, some bacon. I'm gonna try all this. You too? Uh, these are just samples. So they have some French toast, waffles, and pancakes. Look at these pancakes that are in the circle. This is amazing. So definitely wanna check out this breakfast buffet. This might be the highlight. This might even be better than room and then at the end. Look at this medley of sauces. I might have found my calling as a buffet narrator. That buffet was the most memorable part of this stay. Easily, by far. The meal last night was awesome. That lounge and dining G, I mean, despite the fact, despite the fact its naming and branding is awful, lounge and dining G, if they had an awesome name, I think it'd attract a lot more customers, even from outside this hotel. It is amazing. The dinner last night was amazing. The alcohol selection was amazing. The cocktails were awesome. Expansive list of cocktails, a great, really comprehensive dinner list, and then that buffet today, that breakfast buffet, that was unreal. Uh, my highlights were the donuts, and then trying the Japanese omelet and then the fish bake. That fish bake was basically like fish and cheese combined into one. That's all I can, that's all I can really describe it. And then number two, that Japanese omelet, that was just a circular egg that was wrapped by itself, just kind of spiraled into itself, and it was cold. Interesting, uh, not my cup of egg, not my cup of tea, not my cup of egg, not my type of egg, but uh, interesting nonetheless. That's why we travel to these places so we can explore and indulge. So that's it. Um, let me give you some rundown on this room. Real quick, let me show you something that is really interesting. So let's say you're in the bathroom and I wanna show you two things in the bathroom. Number one, I did find a couple interesting things in this vanity kit. First of all, I like the box. Not that it would ever close or you could ever take it, but I do like the fact it's in a box. What did I find? Two toothbrushes. 
So in case you're traveling with someone and you both forgot your toothbrush, there's a black and a white one, a little yin-yang going on there. Oh, I found a scrunchie. Okay, so in case you lost your scrunchie, they gave you one. And last but not least, you always see a razor. Usually a razor in a vanity kit, at least the good ones. But they actually have shaving gel, right? They actually give you the shaving gel as well. I thought that was cool. So those are the highlights I found inside that vanity kit. Again, I like those purple glasses. Those are so cool. All right, so let me run you through a hypothetical. Okay, and I just found this to be interesting. This is just, to me, kind of funny. Um, so let's say you're in the shower and someone is at the door or there's a fire or they're giving away free drinks of that 21 year old whiskey i had last night and you need to dart down immediately okay so again hear me here just hear me but let's say you're in the shower all right look how many doors you need to get through to get outside so here's one shower door okay here's the second door here's the third door now you're only in your bedroom all right so here's the fourth one i did not set this up right so now here's the fourth one Here's the fifth one. And then finally, finally, here is the sixth door to go outside. So to go from shower to a hallway, you have to go through six doors. Just thought that was kind of funny. All right, so here's the deal. Let me give you the, let me give you the real rundown. Uh, when I was staying at the autograph collection, the Prince Secura, I liked the hotel. The Zen Garden really won me over. It won my heart. I really had an emotional sentiment tied to that Zen Garden. The hotel was, was okay. I recommended it for people who are value-minded, who want to be in the city, but don't want to pay extravagant and extraordinary prices for the hotels in the Rapingi area. So I recommended it for people who do not want to stay in the hotel. After coming here to this Marriott, I don't think I'd go back to an autograph collection hotel, even though it had a Zen garden and that other hotel attached to it. This hotel is unreal, underrated. Wow, I mean, I looked at the ratings online at TripAdvisor. I looked at the ratings uh, on Marriott.com. I don't know who's giving these ratings because they got it wrong. This, this hotel is awesome. This hotel is really, really cool. Is that this, this is not a destination hotel, even though for me it could be. I think it's marketed as a business hotel because it's in that tower. It's in this tower, and I think that because it's in this business tower, and it's kind of business-minded, and it is like a little upscale, you get, you get that upscale vibe from this place. Although it isn't pretentious, it's not condescending, like it can be kind of at the Ritz and places like that. This is very approachable. Very, very approachable class and very, very approachable luxury. I think that people just think it's just a regular Marriott so they don't come. This is a hidden jewel and I recommend it completely. If you want an airport hotel, if you want a uh, Hanada, I've been saying Hanita wrongly, I guess, and I'm, I apologize for that. Uh, I guess it's Hanada. If you want to be at a Hanada airport hotel, this is it. It, it, it. This is it. So um, that's it. I'm signing off. This one day uh, review actually came to fruition. It turned, it started with a surprise upgrade and then that spiraled into a full-blown walkthrough and review and I'm really, really glad I did. It's funny how life works out sometimes. So